like health insurance is your core niche for those that don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and mainly, you know, under 65, um, you know, it's just been, it's just been kind a, of my sweet spot. You know, the biggest misconception in the insurance industry in regards to health insurance. Tell me. There's no money in it. Uh, yeah. I made 110 grand my first year as a broker selling health insurance. I made, wow. I made, uh, I made about 80 grand my first year ever selling insurance with, with a captive agency. So. Dude, that's freaking baller though. Yeah. How many people can you, can, do you know that can say that? Not many. And, Not and, and frankly, uh, it's, it's something that I, I talk about often because yeah. I never, I always thought that I would just do construction, manual labor. Like I, I didn't think that six figures was really in my in my wheelhouse, and, and now we're talking about seven figures. Yeah, dude, right? come on, you're gonna make so, seven figures next few years. Let's yeah, keep it next real. year, next year, boom, next year. 2021. Right? We're speaking into existence. 2021. Probably. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but we're gonna do it, right? I, six more months figured out, and then you know we'll, we'll go for it. Hey, today I got my good buddy, the Mr. Brad Hannon. This dude's a freak. He is the health insurance guru, master, whatever crazy title you want. When I, when I think about health insurance, man, like you're the first dude that comes to mind. Well, good. That's where I want to be positioned, right? Yeah. When I think about insurance coaching, you're the first person to come to mind. There so. we go. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. What about events? You're getting there. Okay, yeah, getting, you're getting there. The I mean, I think, I, think, I think GC and then I think, and then I think oh, CA. Oh, okay, so, okay, okay. I mean, you yeah. got to. Maybe me too. There. Probably yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This good year, man. though. This year. This year is the year you catch them. For Boom. sure. I love it. I love it. I love it. Brad. He's in the office in Springfield hanging out for a couple days, man. You, you were down there working with the sales team earlier a little bit, trying to whip them into shape. It was uh, fun. It was fun. What, 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 what's your thoughts been? I haven't asked this question. What's your thoughts been on, like, you know, before I jump into your story, what's your thoughts been on the office, the culture, uh, jumping into the, the hot seat, you know, being here for whatever, 20, 19 hours yeah. or something, you know? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I told you, I kind of I kind of alluded to this earlier at lunch. I think that, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I'm here is because, I could have gone any insurance office and, yeah. and I could have, I could have seen an insurance agency and the way that an insurance agent, and I understand the way that that runs, but, but the way that you guys do things with, with the, the video team and the, and the marketing team and the, and the engineers, which is a term that I learned today, uh, <laughs> that, that it's just different. And that's, yeah. that's ultimately where I think that we're headed in insurance and, and that's what I wanted to see. But I think that everybody has a hyper focus on playing their part and, and i think that's so crucial in a in a in a in a business that's going to be successful is everybody playing their part and everybody doing their role to the best of their ability and i think that i've seen that for the most part so. good man thank you buddy i mean you you you, you hit on a couple things there i mean the average age of an insurance agent is 59 and a half our industry is w way freaking behind um, absolutely events are boring you know, traditional ballrooms, right? I, mean, I don't know that I've been to one, so I, I can't really. Dude, I mean, aside from aside from the carrier trips, and, yeah, because you gave stuff, your but... freaking eight percent ticket to somebody else. You know, <laughs> I did. Is that is that gonna happen this year? That's a true story. I I did I did. Uh, but he, he he he. You know what? He gave him somebody else that showed up, right? Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, no, I gave him to a, just a, a less fortunate agent. You know, there no, you go. Kidding. There you no, go. I won, He's I won some free good... tickets, and uh, and I and I couldn't make it, so I gave him away, and uh, and and we talked about it too. Is I we. You had the tour where you were doing the the free event, and yes. uh, and I had signed up for that, and then I started getting calls from the sales team, and uh, <laughs> and so that's kind of how we got connected. But I saw a lot of your stuff around, and you know it was always good stuff, but never consumed it, never never really dove in. It's the it's the same concept as somebody would see Grant Cardone or Gary Vee or whatever. You know, yeah. you're you're that to the insurance world, and and uh, and. and if you don't actually consume it, then then you're just kind of sitting in the bleachers watching. You're not in the game, and so yeah, uh, I came up here to get in the game. I came up here to, you know, make up for that lost time with not being an eight percent nut last yep, year and, yep. and missing the uh, event. So um, that's that's why I'm here, man. It's been wow. it's been a blast so far, um, but I can't even imagine how fun it's going to be whooping you in pickleball. Oh, dude, I was about to go there. I was about to say, dude, you haven't seen nothing yet. So we get on the I, pickleball. Class. I read but your you mind. Freaking, you beat me to it, bro. Mind. You beat me to it, man. That, that's a, a sales guy is always like one step <laughs> ahead, man. You know? Yeah. Cody taught me to control the conversation. And so I come into his interview room yes, and, I, and I try to yes. control the conversation. Dude, before right? we know it, he's going to be interviewing me. Yeah. You know? well. well, I mean, appreciate you coming in town, by yeah. the way. It's, it has been a blast. I'm, I'm loving spending time with you. You know, I don't know how we officially met per se or, or, or you know, when or, or, or how, but um, I'm loving getting to know you. You know, we're working together in a lot of ways, a lot of synergy. Uh, you're a good dude. Good, good. good. Uh, there's a lot of people that 
Like I, I don't, I, I don't put people that I can't recommend to our audience in that seat. So yeah. that says a lot about your character, the kind of person you are, how much you want to help the industry. And, and you talked about something a second ago, being in the game, man. Like a lot of people are not in the game. Yeah. Has it always been, have you always wanted to be in the game? Like, is that, is that your, have you always had that type of personality? Yeah. I mean, you, you heard it in the, in the room with where we're, earlier, we're, we're working through some things with, with these engineers. Right. And, yeah. and for those of you watching that don't know what an engineer is, it's not like, not like a structural engineer or like a, you know, like an engineer working on the, the software and the back end of things that I, I know nothing about. Um, but like, yeah. I just have an interest to learn it. You know, you heard, like, yeah. I'm like, Hey, can you guys show me how some of this works? I, I think that, you know, anytime someone like you or I see somebody doing something and, and doing it well, uh, you know, w we feel as though we can do it, uh, at least that good. I, I try not to, you know, I've always said the exact same thing. No joke. <laughs> like, like someone that's uber successful at whatever point, they always felt like they could do what other people were doing. Not always better, but we always deep down felt like, okay, if he can do that, Dude, I can do that. Well, yeah. Where's that come from? Why is that the case? I I, I don't know uh, where it comes from, but I do know that one thing I've learned, even just being here too, is there's a lot of things that I might be able to do, mm. uh, but a lot of things that I should not be doing. Yeah. Right. Because I got to stay in in my ten. I got to stay where I'm I'm most effective, and so uh, I know it's not behind a computer screen coding websites. So. Yeah. Uh, one day, maybe in the future, when I like right. a, a new project, but for now, uh, I like to I like to sell insurance and, and train agents. To sell okay, insurance. so 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 on that note, right? So you, you sell a ton of insurance. You're going to make a significant amount of money. We'll just call it multiple six figures. You know, we'll put okay. it, we'll put it that way uh, on a way to seven figures quickly, which Amen. is which is which is awesome. I'm going to speak that into existence right now. That's right. Uh, let's 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 get a little competitive for a second just for the let's fun it. of it you know uh i think we can have a little fun in the hot seat with you today um and you'll do well with it me and you one month we're both selling insurance over the phone and that's all we do and that's our entire focus and we go just absolute gangbusters that's it right that's all we're doing one month yeah. a mano a mano yeah, who, who I know win? where you're going with this, and I, I'm gonna win. And, oh, and, and, come on. And, and, it, and it's not. What do you guys think? <laughs> Put in comments below. What do you guys think? Yeah, no, please Brad do. Brad or Cody? Please do. But before you comment, you have to understand the logic, right? Because oh, okay. uh, you, you, there, there's, there's a logical explanation to why I would, I would beat Cody, and, and it's because Cody would, would probably default to uh, tell, uh, selling final expense, right? Which is ordinarily a smaller premium. Yeah. Uh, and, and also one application. So if we're measuring on on annual volume or annual premium or at number of applications. I think I got you, man. I just, okay. I think I got you. You, you do cross sell and bundle like health insurance is your core niche for those that don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and mainly, you know, under 65, um, you know, it's just been, it's just been kind of my sweet spot. You know, the biggest misconception in the insurance industry in regards to health insurance. Tell me. There's no money in it. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, and I think that I mean we have a logical reason for that too. I mean, uh, when when the ACA rolled out and commissions were cut, yeah, it pushed a lot of agents out. It pushed a lot of agents into Medicare. It pushed a lot of agents into, you know, uh, just either different sectors of the industry or out of the industry altogether. And so mm -hmm. when I'm talking to to clients and I'm saying, you know, hey, I've been doing this for five years. Uh, that makes me a veteran in, in the health insurance space, honestly, Crazy. because there was almost like a reset in the industry when the ACA came out. And, and again, a lot of people were pushed out um, or just, you know, diverted to another another channel. But, um, you know, five years doing nothing but under 65 health insurance for the most part. Um, we, we did start, you know, with some Medicare and things like that. But sure. uh, but still my specialty, my passion. Uh, what I love, and, and mainly because I'm finding out that it's a niche. I, I'm sure mm -hmm. that there's a lot of people watching this that don't sell health insurance, and I never realized that. I thought oh, if dude. you were going to get into insurance, you were either going to sell auto, home, or you were going to sell health insurance and Medicare, like, but mainly yes. health insurance. And so, um, you know, I, I don't know, man. We, you, me, Justin did that uh, webinar, and that opened my eyes to the fact that a lot of people are are not taking advantage yeah, of yeah, the yeah. opportunity we have in the under 65 health insurance space. I was amazed at uh, the amount of money available when, when I got to know you, right? I promoted the, the webinar and was a part of it and got to really sit there and listen. I didn't have a lot to say for frankly, let's be honest. Uh, I can make stuff up yeah. and like get everybody excited. And, yeah. You know, but, but when it comes to health insurance, dude, I've never sold health insurance. 
and, and, and I'm gonna leave that to you, right? So if I get it, I'm gonna just send it to you. You can take care of them. I'll be yeah. happy to. Uh, wh- where's why health insurance, man? Because yeah, 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 it's, it's a good niche, and we know riches are in the niches and all that. But how did that start out to where you're like health insurance? It is. Yeah. So the the captive agency that I started with was was it was health insurance exclusively, and uh, and so I made a transition from that to a more independent broker role. Uh, where and, and it was October, right, of 2017, right before open enrollment. Mm. I didn't, and, and in the middle of the annual election period for Medicare, and I didn't have, I didn't have time to figure out Medicare and, and to go to selling Medicare. I had to default to what I knew, yeah. and so I, I learned a few products very well, and uh, and and kind of stuck with that. And rather than trying to, you know, fit a bunch of square pegs and round holes, I I found the product. I knew who that product was designed around, right? Like I knew that this particular carrier, this particular product was designed for healthy, self-employed people that, yeah. you know, were, were, were paying way too much in the marketplace. And so I just took a kind of a hyper focus and, uh, and it got me back to like a baseline income to where I could then start to uh, transition into some of those niches or those other sectors of the industry like Medicare, Mm -hmm. you know, life insurance, group benefits, that kind of stuff. But I really believe uh, that to get started in the insurance industry, you have to be, you have to be focused on, on, on one or two products, one, one sector of the industry. So if you're going to sell Medicare, you know, learn Medicare, if you're going to sell health insurance, learn health insurance, and then kind of go from there because ultimately, whether it's health insurance or Medicare, you're going to build a good little chunk of residual income that you'll have the time and, and, and availability to learn some other things. So uh, for me, it might be engineering. It might mm-hmm. be, it might be Medicare, right? Yeah, it might yeah, be group yeah. benefits, we'll most engineer. likely insurance. What, what's say, say you have, we have someone watching and they're brand new. They barely know how to spell health insurance. Okay. And if someone will, is coachable and they'll listen and they'll put in the work and, and do what you say. How likely are they are to actually, to, to actually make six figures selling health insurance? I, I think if, if they're all of those things, I mean, you started it off with could barely spell health insurance. So, <laughs> you know, they do have to but have- they work hard, who <laughs> yeah, cares? Yeah. So, well, hey, I mean, I, I was gonna say they'd have to have an above average IQ, but I think I have an average IQ. So I think uh, they would just have to have an average- Me too. Uh, IQ and, and ultimately, that's the most important thing you said, be teachable, be coachable. Yeah. Um, I see people come from, you know, we, we see it a lot. We see agents bounce from, from agency to agency, from, from different, you know, from Medicare to health, to final expense, back to Medicare, back to, and, and they never actually focus. But yeah. realistically, I would say that somebody that is, is focused and, and hardworking and coachable uh, could make six figures in their second year. And, and we're going to wow. see that this year with a lot of my agents that, you know, came on middle last year, still made sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 last year and, and are well on pace for six figures this year. So, yeah. you know, and, and none of these people came from an insurance background, you know, if, or even a business background. for that. If, if I went and joined your team tomorrow, whew, we'd have to get a bigger office. That's true. Yeah. What, what, and I didn't bring anyone and I just focused on health insurance. How much money would I make? In, in, in your office, your system, everything else over the next 12 months? So my first year in health insurance, I made 110,000. So I believe that you could easily make 109,000, uh, but I was, definitely under That was a setup, by the way, because you said earlier that, <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah, 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 okay. I'm okay. remembering, yeah, no, I, I got, I, I knew where you're going at, but I think you could, I mean, you, you could easily make six figures your first year. Um, it's not uncommon. Well, I did it, cold door knock, cold door knock, <laughs> and sell a life insurance. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I think that there's there's a, a bigger market for health insurance, which is always why I've, I've kind of wondered why it's a smaller niche or why it's an underserved niche. I mean, there's a lot more people out there in the under 65 space that are, you know, uh, then confused. They're on Medi- the, 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 then are 65 plus. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're confused. I mean, frankly, like the, the people that are self-employed or the, the worst situation you see is like they left a job where they had great benefits because they wanted to take this business venture on their own yeah. or, or get into real estate or whatever the case is. And, and they're like, yeah, so I had a thousand dollar deductible on my group plan. I was paying 50 bucks a month. You know, what, what can you do? And, and we're like, there's a learning curve there. We got to, we got to walk them through. Hey, listen, the, the under 65 world is not perfect for the self-employed, mm. 
But we're, I always say if you have 10 options and, and all 10 options are, you know, just okay, we've got to choose one of those 10 options still. Otherwise, we're going without coverage. And so we're going to always choose the best option that, that, that sucks the least, right? Because like at the end that. of the day, it's, it's insurance, you know, even yeah, if you're talking yeah. – you know, and I'm I'm very much a positive person. I think you've you've picked up on that, dude. But, no doubt. But uh, but but when you're when you're talking about insurance, I think you, you've got to understand you're talking about insurance, and nobody uh, nobody's super pumped about buying an insurance policy, whether it's like the best plan in the world or not. You know, they hope to not have to use it. They hope to not have to pay too much for it, and they hope that it covers everything every time they use it. Yes. And uh, and and that's just not insurance. You know, that's not homeowners insurance. It's not your car insurance, and and that's certainly not health insurance. So yeah. I think coming from a realistic uh, point of view is absolutely what helps me uh, in this industry. So you made one hundred ten grand your first year selling health insurance. I did. I, I made one hundred ten grand my first year as a broker selling health insurance. I made. Wow. I made. Uh, I made about 80 grand my first year ever selling insurance with with a captive agency so dude that's freaking baller though yeah how many people can you do you know that can say that not many not and 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 frankly uh it's it's something that i, I talk about often because yeah. i never i always thought that i would just do construction manual labor like I, I didn't think that six figures was really in my in my wheelhouse and, and now we're talking about seven figures yeah dude right? come on you're gonna make so, seven, seven figures next few years let's yeah keep it next real. year next year Boom, Next, 2021. Right? We're speaking into existence. 2021. Right? I don't know how I'm going to do it, but we're going to do it, right? I, six more months to figure it out, and then, you know, we'll, we'll go for we'll it. We'll figure but, it out. Um, where were you going with that? Why, why did you think six figures was never in the cards for you? Like, is, is, Do you think that's an upbringing? Do you think that's a mindset? Do you think it's a, it's a scarce? Like, I, I don't, I, you know what I mean? Because. Yeah, and, and you know. It's definitely, it's an upbringing thing. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, I was raised, uh, with, I mean, everybody in my family is manual labor, right? It's just kind of, yeah. uh, and, and not to say they're not doing very well. I mean, sure. some people in my family are doing really well doing manual Absolutely. labor. Absolutely. Like, Nothing wrong with that. It was, it was for me just, I don't know, man, I guess, I guess I didn't know my worth. I guess, I mm -hmm. guess I was, uh, you know, I guess I was just a little, a little overwhelmed with real life. And, uh, and so, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't insurance that made me feel like I could, I could make six figures. Honestly, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was just kind of overcoming some of that, some of that, those limiting beliefs we talk yes. about. What, what were yours? Because we talked about that a lot lately and I've been, I've been picking up on that. What were your limiting beliefs? One of my limiting beliefs was that I felt like I was going to do construction my whole life and, and, you know, 40, $60,000 a year was going to be it for me. And, and, yeah. and I could be happy with that, you know, and, and certainly I could, but I, it, it was, I don't need to make more than that. Uh, who cares? Mm. Uh, what What's the point, right? I mean, I, I'm happy here, right? I, I don't need money. I don't need, and I still feel that way. How did you flip the script on that though? Because now you at least have the in, in, inner drive to make that a reality. Whether you really care if you make two million bucks or not, you still want it. It's going to, it's going to sound really bad, um, but That's it's right. not, no, they won't tell it's, it's not, it's not a, like, I'm not, I'm not money motivated exclusively obviously yeah. like most people money is is motivating um but i i feel as though money is kind of like a scoreboard dude right? i was and swear so, <laughs> i was thinking scoreboard over here i swear and so is so as soon as i turned it into a competition um you know to to go after more and more yes. and, and ultimately it's what we're talking about it's breaking through that next limiting belief i had a i have yeah. a meeting with my team on wednesday before we came up here um you know this is about more than breaking that six figure mark. This is about more than, than the, this is about breaking through that limiting belief so that we can see what's behind that curtain and what's the next limiting belief. Yes. Because I believe, I don't believe I've arrived. I mean, we're talking like I had limiting beliefs and I don't have limiting beliefs anymore, but I do. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I deal with it every day. So explain you know? what the, that is for those that don't know what a limiting belief is. So a limiting belief would be anything that, anything that, is in your mind that is that, that is going against why you couldn't reach your goal, right? So like yeah, you know, you back. so so I, I can make six figures this year, but I've got to do this, this, and that, or 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 I've got to overcome this, this, and that, and and so I mean, we had a conversation earlier uh, with with one of my agents, and it was yeah, it, it was breaking down that goal and and what you actually need to do to achieve it, and and I think a lot of people they're they they just don't yeah do yeah. That. yeah. They just don't break it down. How many people struggle with that uh, that misconception we were talking about on the phone with your agent about how the, most agents feel like they need to know everything before they do anything? Yeah, 
and and I and I call that like getting ready to get ready, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's it's I'm like you're about to get started. Yeah, like I promise. I'm, well, I'm about to get started after I get this taken care of. Yeah. But like, and it's and that may be a limiting belief. Right? Oh, dude, it is. It's definitely it's it's kind of like that first call fear. Like you you don't know anything about insurance. I have yeah. found, and this is I mean, this just came to fruition big time with with one of my newer agents in the office. I mean, we closed like six deals for him in a month. Like, I mean, he was killing it when he was passing the, the, the lead off, when he didn't know anything about the product, right? When he didn't know anything about insurance, really. An he was just, yeah, he was just finding, he was just fact finding and finding the right client. And then he was passing that to, you know, a closer we'll say, and, and we closed a lot of deals for him. And then as soon as he learned a little bit about, about the product, he started to, to divulge that and, and to come out with that right away. And it took us another month to, to get him back to selling again. And we kind of had to go back to some of the basics, but that ultimately, the more you know about the product, the more you're likely to get yourself in trouble by saying yeah. something silly. And, and I'm not recommending you go out there and sell it on your own while not knowing about the product. So don't misunderstand me. I'm saying if you have somebody, and most agents do, right? If you do. have somebody that can help you close those sales, lean on them, lean on. And if they're not willing to help you, then somebody run. <laughs> yeah, exactly, on. exactly. And if they're not willing to, to, to be there for you to help you close those first sales, run. He will. Run, hit, hit the road. Yeah. That's the, that's the most fun thing that I probably do is close sales for new agents. I mean, I can be on the phone closing a sale and, and, and I'm like real casual about it. And if I close it, then I close it. If I don't, you know, it's like, yeah. it's kind of different. How much of a rush is that? Cause oh, I still man. get a rush when, oh. I, when I'm helping my guys close deals. When it's for somebody else, man, it's like, it, it's, it's just bigger to do, me. Do you feel like you do better at other people's deals than your 100%, 100%. own? 100%. Where's that come from? Because it's, you know, it's hard for me to disagree with that too. I, I, I mean, one thing is, is, is I'm training. That's a, that, that yeah. sale, that so, sales so, call. So you it. move a little slower. You're a little more focused, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I sent in the, I sent in the recording for that telesales mastery yes. deal. And, uh, is that why you're I, mad at me? Cause you got yeah, third. Yeah. Yeah. I got third, but I know why I got third. And again, there's always logic behind this stuff and selling health insurance just isn't the same as selling final expense. And, and so Vom Eigen took the, took the cake cause he That's sells final true. expense, but, but I know he's got some skills though. He so, and he's he got does. bigger guns than me. So especially Dude. now after, after not going to the gym for a little bit, uh, you know, he's, we went he this morning it. though. Yeah, we did. We killed. How was that morning. for, for, I talk about energy, working out, all this other stuff. People, nobody's ever, you're one of the first dudes that's actually ever been to the gym with me. It was, uh, it was, it was fun, man. I, I, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. We were, tra yeah. you know, I had a day of traveling, but, um, was, I, you know, we had to get after it. And the, the thing yeah, I did. liked the most is, uh, is, you know, we had that bad storm last night and knocked out the power for a little while. And so Lauren had mentioned, you know, hopefully we have hot water and I'm thinking we don't need hot water. We take Freaking cold, cold showers, showers bro. <laughs> like not together, you know, separately, Jeez. but you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, dude, it wakes you up, man. It gets you ready for the day. And yeah, it's, it's good for you. It, it wakes you up and it forces you to get out of your comfort zone, which yeah. a lot of insurance agents struggle with. Okay. As I'm going to pivot quickly, um, because we're going to get some comments about that. Okay. Uh, which is all right. We're not gonna edit it. So you do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, why is what why is getting out of your like like getting out of your comfort zone is limiting belief for a lot of people operating not up not operating in a, in a place of fear for me when we go back to limiting beliefs for me mine was worrying about what everybody thought we would get negative comments on youtube and i would i would care now i'm like dude i'm putting my best foot forward yeah you either like me or you, or you love me yeah and you, i you and, choose and i'm i'm honestly i'm picking that's the only option <laughs> like or love yeah I'm, i mean i'm i'm picking some of that up too because that that's definitely i mean i think I think you'd be you'd be like just different if you didn't have that feeling of like man if I put this out there on the internet people could say anything and and so that that definitely is something that I I, I still think about. Dude, it know? was so bad for me early on. Yeah. I thought everything had to be perfect, right? I was gonna know everything before I do anything. Yeah, I thought everything had to be perfect before we put anything up. Now we're like. That sucked. We're gonna put it up anyway. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's probably it's probably gonna get more views than the Dude, one that's that was the really thing. good. Yeah. You don't know either. Yeah. You know, we're doing. I'll be like, yeah, this one probably won't do well. I'm like, holy freak. Yeah, you know? no, it's it's true, man. And and I I pick up on that, and that's what you got to lean into fear, right? And yeah. that's that's where we were going. I think is yes, is, you know, yes. we we steer away from fear. We steer away from uh, being uncomfortable. And I think the more you lean into that, right, the more you lean into your fear, like. 
like getting up on stage in front of thousands of people was never something that was comfortable for me and nor you. And then I don't think you're like, I don't think anybody's born like naturally just, I'm going to get on stage in front just, of thousands of yeah, people, yeah. right? You might get, wow. you might get used to it quicker than somebody else sure. or something because you're, you're put in that position, but man, to get on stage in front of that now, like I know that I would just lean into that, right? Yeah. Like I, like I would lean into that because I'm going to learn something. I might screw it up, dude. I, I might, but I think everyone's gonna laugh with me. We're all human, and, totally. and those that don't, I mean, they're the idiots. They're not invited back. <laughs> yeah, so. whatever. So it's uh, it's fun, man. I, I like to I like to challenge myself. I like to, you know, get out of my comfort zone and yeah. and for, try to do things different. For those that don't know Brad, all right, I wanted to wait a little bit. Walk us through your story briefly. You know, who who is Brad Hannon? So, so I guess my story really starts at birth, right? Like everyone else, but no. So, um, you know, construction background, right? I did, did a lot of construction and, and was just manual labor going back there again. And, um, and then I, I got this email one time, um, from a church that was starting my area and, and I just, I don't know what it was, but I, I went to check out that church and, and they were in the process of painting and things like that. So I just lended a helping hand, you know, I, I met the pastor and, we, we were painting some walls and getting ready. And, and so I got involved in the church and, and ultimately got involved in ministry, which I think helped me push through some of those limiting beliefs. Mm. Um, so I, I went to ministry school for a year, um, did a, did a, uh, like a, a pastoral college type mm-hmm. deal, um, for youth ministry, moved to Orlando to help, uh, my youth pastor plant a church there called Action Church, and uh, and that pastor's name is Justin Daly, and he's still to this day, uh, man, just one of the best leaders I've ever had the opportunity to be around. Um, he just oh. he's just a really he's just a really strong, passionate leader that I got to learn a lot from. But ultimately, I don't feel like the ministry was 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 for me like long term. It was a great learning uh, it was a great learning experience. I grew a lot. I learned a lot about leadership. Um, moved back to Sarasota to kind of fast forward. Moved back to Sarasota when I, when I felt like my my time in Orlando was was up. Uh, moved back to Sarasota to be close to the family and everything. Uh, rekindled things with my high school sweetheart. Aha! Uh-huh. And at that time, I was playing a lot of golf. You know, I was I was golfing every day. I, I had a little business that was you know making me a little bit of money and 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 didn't require a whole lot of labor from me. And so I was like, okay, perfect. You know, I'm just going to play some golf. I got, I got my sugar mama, you know, she's taking care of me. And, uh, and, and she said, Hey, why don't you sell insurance? Like she worked for an insurance agency. She was, uh, an office manager Mm. and, uh, why don't you sell insurance? And I'm like, this insurance, no way. No way. At the time I was finding assisted living facilities for, uh, seniors. And, and I thought, like I'm not going from one boring career. It was rewarding. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not going from one boring career to like insurance, which is like the ultimate boredom. Yeah. Uh, in my mind. And then I went to, I went to like a, a, a company Christmas party deal, met a lot of young people, a lot of people that were killing it. And I had that thought like, man, if they're doing it, mm. I can do it too. I mean, Hey, if this guy's going to make yeah. a quarter million dollars this year, why, why can't I? Did, I, did that thought come into your mind earlier in life too? Before that, was that was those was that something that came into your mind along the way uh, with sports or anything else? Oh yeah, no, it definitely. I mean, it definitely played a role in the sports. But I think that I think that between the period of like graduating high school, out of high school, to like before I jumped into the ministry, yeah, that's the those are I, I would say the darker days, if you will. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't down the dumps all the time, but like I just didn't have a whole lot of. I didn't have a whole lot that I was going after. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't hungry at that point in time. But as soon as like after, you know, after the, the Bible school and all that, that's when that's when the, a lot of those limiting beliefs are gone. And, yeah. and so I started to feel again like, man, if that guy did it, I can do it. Is, is it is it that people need something? Because you went through some of those years where you're like, ah, flip, I don't care. You know, I don't. Absolutely. It, well, is it people that people need something? big to chase a challenge a passion something to drive them you know i I think that's why i'm always being pulled into the future by something huge i'm trying to accomplish because otherwise i'll just get lost in the mundane yeah i think that goes back to uh just having something to believe in that's bigger than yourself right because if i was do and that's what that's when things started to change because i'll be honest with you when i when i started an insurance and i and i went from you know, making thirty thousand dollars a year to eighty my first year to to quite a bit more my second year. Um, 
it went to my head a little bit, you know. It was doing it for me at that time. I really didn't have much of a team. It was just, it was, it was. So, I was more of a producer. And so, how did it go to your head? Explain, like, you know, did you just roll up in like a it's, sick it's, car and get no, a Rolex? Dude, well, yeah. I mean, I had the, I had the ostrich bag leather, or what? The, <laughs> the ostrich leather cowboy boots. You know, the 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 Gucci watch, whatever. Like, you know, just Gucci belt. What? Like, I was just buying a lot of material things and and. Ultimately, I think that uh, that's not really you today, though. No, man, it's not me at all. And I mean, I'm listen. You know, I I, I appreciate the finer things in life absolutely oh, because I think it's kind of a, a an incentive for 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 the work. But um, you know, I think ultimately the sa- the sales environment it creates this competitiveness to where yes. if I'm number one, like you can't tell me I'm not the best. Like, that's what do you mean? True. The leaderboard says it, but. But like what I realized is just because I was number one on the leaderboard and, and I was writing the most business, that doesn't mean like I, I was the best, you know, like yeah. did I have a good heart? Did I was I doing it for the right reasons? What, and so, you know, I got away from that a little or, I, you know, I got into that. Then then I started to, you know, build a team and, and that kind of stuff. And when when you see somebody else mm-hmm. go from like zero to, to, to six figures like that, that is yeah. when. I mean, that's, that's exciting. You know, it's cool to do it for yourself for a little while and it feels awesome. Don't get me wrong. Right. But like when you see somebody else do it and, and you played a role in that, I mean, that's fun. And knowing that anybody can do it, exactly. like um, almost anybody. I mean, I just, I think so too. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll never, I'll never be the kind of person that, you know, is only looking for experienced licensed agents. I think I, I have more fun with someone that doesn't have their license training them in insurance to, you know, to, to make it from, you know, maybe 60 grand their first year, which is a yep. huge jump. And you see them real, real happy and proud of it. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, just wait till those renewals kick in. And right. then, you're, then you're making another 60, 70 grand. That's going to turn into six figures next year. And, and you see it happening, but they don't, they still don't, they have a limiting belief. And, yeah. then, they, and then they break through that. And then, you know, it, it's limitless after that. I feel like. Do you ever see people stop three feet from gold? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. I think that uh, I think that I almost did myself. You know, mm. I, I, I think that my, you know, my story uh, when I went to uh, kind of more independent broker role, it was October. Uh, I had I had really no choice but to work throughout open enrollment. Right, it's our season, so I worked through open enrollment. And but during that time period, I told my wife, I said, I'm I'm done with insurance. I said, I'm I'm going to get a real estate license. I'm going to do I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. But it sure as heck's not going to be an insurance because I just I mean, I just don't want to get burned. I don't want to, you know, there's some bad yeah. eggs in this in this world like there is in any industry. Totally. Um and and so I just had kind of a little bitterness and I felt like I'm getting out of this world. And and if I would have stopped in January of that year and went and got my real estate license, mm-hmm. I might've done well, but dude, I, I really feel like that would have been stopping three feet from gold for sure. Yeah, definitely would have. What, what, why do, uh, I'm excited for your opinion on this. Why do, for those that are watching, why do 92% of insurance agents fail? Man, it's, it's, it's twofold for sure. But like, I think the biggest reason is not having enough people to talk to, uh, not, not, not having enough people, just not talking to enough yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, we people. had, we have conversations all the time about, you know, just picking up the phone and, and, yes. and doing it. You know, what am I going to say? I don't know. Figure it out. Who say cares? something. Who yeah. Say, say I'm new to insurance. You're going to get a lot of buy-in by somebody yeah. that, that answered the phone and they're like, what are you calling me for? Like, honestly, sir, I'm not really sure why I'm calling you. I, uh, I just started selling insurance yesterday and, and this is my first call. <laughs> Dude, you might close that sale right there. I mean, if you're calling they me. They may say, well, they may be nice and they may have a great day and they'd be like, well, well it's okay. What type of insurance yeah. do you sell? I've been but looking for a new insurance. If I'm getting agent. that call, if I'm getting that call and somebody's real on the other end of the I'm phone. I'm not going to be a jerk. Me, I'm, I'm way more receptive. If, totally. But if somebody's trying to, to fake it and, and you know, I, I pick up the phone for salespeople all the time and I'm really entertained by the pitch. I mean, when it sounds like a pitch, click. When it sounds like, like, Somebody that I might have a conversation with, not a, a person, robot. yeah, not a robot, then then certainly I'm having a conversation. But 92% of insurance agents fail because they just don't talk to enough people. They just yeah. don't have enough activity. They just, and and it, I think it scares people all the time to the thought of making 200 calls a day or 300 calls a day or whatever. Right. But like I was told when I started insurance, man, if you make 100 calls a day, you can make six figures. And I'm thinking, if I dig a if I dig a hundred foot ditch with a shovel, I'm gonna make thirty grand, and you're telling me I can make six figures making a hundred calls. Yes, 
I'm going to make 200. I'm going to make 300, you know, whatever. And now I might make 30 a week, you yeah. know, and, and it's, so you're not, you're not always going to be making 300 calls, but if to start this thing, you got to, I mean, it's just like any other business, man. If yeah. you're, if you're launching a, a sneaker store, you better let everybody know you you got the best sneakers in town, right? Like, Absolutely. You, I don't know. You just, I mean, you gotta, you gotta get out there. You gotta talk to people, whether it's, whether it's your, your warm market, your, you know, your, your immediate, like the, the server that brings you lunch mm -hmm. or whatever it is, you've got to be talking to enough people. Dude, that's what's insane about this industry is, is, is okay. 92% fell really, really hard. Um, more millionaires in this industry than any other industry in the world. Really, really amazing. Yeah. But the only reason people fail is they don't talk to enough people. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's... You would think everyone could simple, make six right? figures. Just, just make, put in the work, right? Put in the work. Is and it just that many people are freaking lazy or what? Man? <sighs> I don't know if I want to go there on video, man. We're going to get more comments. That's uh, good. But yeah, That's I believe... Engagement. I, I do. I believe... I mean, look at look at society. This is kind of where we're going. I mean, I think we're, you know, I think I think the more passively we can earn money the, the yeah. better is the idea and and i just don't i just don't buy into that i think that we can compound time yes. by putting forth way more effort now and that, like i i'd hope to like be chilling on the beach with like you me drinking my ties or some by sure. 40 you know at age i don't know 40, what my like, tie is but i'm yeah sure yeah <laughs> at age four it's an alcoholic beverage okay. uh but at, but at age 40 i don't want to be working like i am now and so i'm compounding time every day like i'm i'm putting in extra time putting in you know the, I'm making the most of my time How old so you? that I don't, I'm 30. Okay. 30. So, okay. So you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're what, I hear you have a birthday coming up. Too. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You beat me to the punch yeah. there again. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I am turning 30 in Sorry, about man, a month and a half. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm about to catch what's you. What's the date? Just so everybody knows to wish you happy birthday. July 9th. July 9th. Yes. Okay, 2020. So Thanks, July 9th. Thanks, make bro. sure you're wishing him a happy birthday Thanks, on my bro. behalf too. Cause I'll probably forget, but, uh, no, do, do, you, do you enjoy personally producing or helping others? make money more don't because make me make that decision that's tough don't make me make that's that freaking decision. tough well if yeah. you had to choose if i had to choose <laughs> i would like to personally produce for other people uh, <laughs> right? there you go. Okay. no if i had to choose i would definitely say you'd uh, just be helping. the closer and they would be the opener yeah, yeah i would i would definitely say though helping helping other uh people make those sales is is more rewarding i mean we talked about it just a minute yes, ago it's like did. It's just it's just a different type of it's just a different type of rush right yes. like now this is not just for me this yeah. is but it is you know it's it, like you want to close it for you totally like at the also like they benefit from it as well so how many team members you have we run about 30 agents um you know we've got 30 35 agents right now and we probably have about 20 of those agents produce on a monthly basis so okay. it, it kind of varies i mean i've got i've got agents that you know have blatantly told me like hey my goal is not to make six figures i'm okay mm. making fifteen thousand dollars a year it's it's just to supplement my husband's income or, or whatever and that's that's that while that's not my cup of tea it's also what i love about the industry is you can you can literally make it your own like yeah you, you want to make fifteen thousand dollars extra on the side it's going to be hard to get started because you're doing it on the side but i believe it's possible yeah you know and so i, I think that uh you know i think that for each individual person it's going to be different but Ultimately, my like when I'm working at my best, I'm working with somebody that wants to make six figures and is hungry, and, yeah. and it's just that's that's who I click with. So, well, well, on that note, who do you what do you look for? Can you spot a six figure earner? I used to believe I could, but uh, but people have that people have definitely yeah people definitely have uh, have you know if if there's one thing that you're like you know what all six figure earners have it and you can't use work ethic. Uh, hmm, that's a tough one, man. But I'm trying to put I'm trying to put into words. I can see it, but like I don't. Is it attitude? It, it's it's attitude would be huge, but it's ultimately the the ability to just without without saying work ethic. It's the ability to put the blinders on and put your head down and ah. and, and you know just go after it without yeah. without worrying about what you don't know, right? Because yes. you don't know what you that's don't it, know. That's it. That's and, good. And so I don't I don't know what the word is for that, but like just the ability to just go forth without worrying what what people thinks what happens what and and yeah. i wasn't always that way but um you know i recognized that man that taking that action is far more important than figuring everything out first yeah right those 30 agents about how much in health insurance premium will you guys do this year we'll do over five million 
an, an issued an issued premium. That's so awesome. we'll do. I, awesome. I hope. I mean, I I hope to do over six, but we'll yeah. safely do over five million dollars. Good man, that's huge. Yeah. What, what, what's the secret sauce? Someone's out there like you know what I'm watching. I didn't realize health insurance had some freaking money, uh, and I want to have a I want to grow a team to do six million with you know thirty agents selling health insurance. Man, I think the first step is to do it yourself. I just said, yes. just said to you earlier, um, you know, you. this will be the first year. So we'll 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 do five million, but this will be this might be could be, hopefully it's not, but it could be the first year that I don't personally produce a million of that. So mm. so when I say we're doing a million, that doesn't include you know that doesn't include me doing the million that I normally do. But ah. I I've written a million dollars in premium almost every year I've been in the insurance industry personally. So. I'm speaking from a little bit of experience. Now there's yes. people that do 2 million and 3 million and are, and are far more, uh, you know, far more uh, production based. But, but I believe that, I believe that like I can do the, I got, I got the production, but I also, I also greatly enjoy helping other agents do it. So I'm speaking from a little bit of experience. That's yeah. All. Yeah. Good man. And, and okay. So 30 agents, five, 6 million in premium this year. Let's look, you, you're, you're 30. What about when you're 40? What about when you're 50? What about when you're 60? What about when you're 70? You know? 40, I mean, 40 is going to be like, like I said, I mean, that, that's when I'm looking at retirement, hopefully. Um, but, but between now and 40, I mean, I'm not serious. I don't know that I could retire, period. But, uh, but by 40, I'd like, to, I'd like to really be in more of a uh, consulting role, you know, consulting uh, for my own agency that maybe I've handed, uh, handed down to you know, the next, the next leader or whatnot, sure. but doing a hundred million plus a year, you know, uh, a couple thousand agents. Um, I would, I would, I think that that would be, and even if it wasn't a couple thousand and, it, and sure. I have 500 like producers, killers, yeah. right? Like, like we're not, we're not just bringing on anybody and everybody we're, we're going after those that literally want to make six figures and above. Yes. And, and so if it's 500, writing a hundred million, even better. Right. Yeah. But, uh, because there's, then there's more in it for everybody. Well, a lot of people th don't, don't realize that you, you can build a team and earn a significant amount of money and help a bunch of agents and build a massive team. And it, d it may not take, but a hundred pe good people, yeah. you know, like, you know, you know, you have to go through 2000 to find a hundred good, yeah. at least a thousand, maybe 2000. We, we had that conversation and, and before, before I really have mapped out 10 years and you're like, what, you know, what's the goal production wise? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, a hundred million. And then we're like, okay, how many ages that take? And it's like, really? It was like, like 400 writers yeah, like or we something. Could do that with like, like, we could do a hundred million with like 400 killers. Do you it know? next year. So, um, math's never been my strong suit, but I mean, the, the math is there, right? We yeah. Yeah. That was you your need, math too. Yeah. You don't, you don't need, you don't need 2000 agents and you know, a, a thousand of them are, are, you know, barely even making enough money yes. to, to survive. I would like, you know, an agency where we're, we're based on that six figure and above income, yeah. you know, like we're, we're creating opportunity for those that really want to go after it. Because I think there's many, many companies out there that, will allow you to, you know, write a few pieces of business a month and, and, you know, make that little side Absolutely. hustle. Right. But I, I don't want to, I, I don't necessarily connect with the side hustle people as much. I don't either. You know? I don't either. I, I don't either. I don't even really have a side hustle. Plan B know? distracts from plan A, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. I mean, that's Will there, Smith said that. There's, there's no, what's, there's no plan B for your, or for your A game. For your A game. No yeah, plan B I, just, game. I actually just finished that on the plane here. I actually can't believe I know the title. Man, great, great, great Holy book. freak. What a great great book. book. I put that in my top five books to read. Oh dude. That was one of them. I came here, I came here and I listened to like the end chapters about like, you know, your predator, your predator self. And I'm like, I'm a freaking predator. Come on you know, now. Like I came in here like, Come I'm, on now. I'm a predator. I'm a shark. I'm hungry. Yeah. Like it, it was just, <laughs> dude, it was just really like, I mean, it's a great book, dude. I love it. Yeah. So no plan B for your A game, Bo Eason. It was yeah. recommended by Cody, read it. I love it. It's strong. Yeah. What's, what's another book? I did just, uh, I did just take Tony Merwin's advice and, uh, okay. and was started to listen to, uh, <clears throat> that OG OG Mandino, I believe it was, yeah. um, the greatest salesman in the world. Mm. And what I love about that book so far, I'm only like an hour into it, so like five or six chapters. But uh, because I listen to books, I don't read. Um, but I, I listened to about an hour of it on the plane. And uh, man, I'll tell you, the the I'm so used to reading like like Grant Cardone's 10x rule or like just kind of purely like 
self-improvement type books. Yeah. And while this is that, there's also a narrative that goes along with it. And it's, and it's really cool to follow. So I'm, about to check I, it out. I'm not done with it, but I think that it's a, a great book already. Yeah. And, it's and, awesome. and, and it's different. It's different. If you're always yeah. reading the 10 X rule and you know, whatever else, this would be a good change of pace for you. I did a, I did a video that's, that's blowing up right now on YouTube called three tips for new insurance agents. It's, it's organically taking off this year more than ever. I don't know why. If you had to give your three tips for new insurance agents, what would they be? Man, you love putting me on the spot, don't you? I do. Um, three tips for insurance agents. I would say, um, you know, stay focused, right? And by that, I don't mean like that. I don't mean like stay at your desk ten hours a day and focus. I mean stay focused on 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 a yes. on a product, on a couple products. Get really really good at it, and and you know start there. Um, I would good. say I would say high activity, obviously, like that's probably should be number one. I probably should have said that first, sure. um, a high level of activity. And then the third, just be real, right? Mm. I think that's, I think that is, it transfers over the phone, you know, it, it face to face, obviously you have, yes. I mean, you, you can pick up on that authenticity, but like over the phone, if you're not authentic, you can still pick up on it, right? That's, that's the whole sales pitch versus, yep. you know, just connecting with somebody. And I gave your sales team that advice this morning. You Thank know? you. Um, you're, I mean, you're talking, you got to remind yourself that on the other end of that phone and more so when you're selling insurance, because now you're connecting with that person, but you're all also yes. protecting that person, right? You're, whether it's health insurance or Medicare yeah. or whatever else. So you're providing some sort of layer of protection. And so you got to remember you're talking to a person on the other one. Yeah. So high activity, uh, a, a laser focus and, and, uh, you know, authenticity. Boom. All right. Last question. So we go about 40, 45 minutes. This has been great, by Perfect. the way. Unbelievable. Has this been good or has this been good? All right. It's Let me know good. in comments. You can choose good or good. <laughs> all right. Uh, or real good. Or real good. Um, okay. So final question. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go to, uh, I'm going to go to. Get nervous. <laughs> goal. I've got a bunch of random questions that are popping in my head. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with, with goals. If you could accomplish one thing in your life. You're, you, you, let's just say you're 30, you live to, what age do you want to live to? Let's just, let's just put it out there. 120. Perfect. Nin I don't want to say like 80 or like, cause yeah. when I get to 80, I might feel, but okay. N 90 years from now. Okay. Brad dies. What do you want to be known for? What did you accomplish? What, 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 what do people, what, what do people think of Brad in, in 90 years from today? So I think one of the, that's, I mean, this is an easy question. I'm glad you God, we could finish on Good. something like this because I want to leave a legacy on the insurance industry, right? Just like you. I mean, yes. you and I get along so well because we're locking arms and we're trying to change an industry that no doubt. quite frankly, doesn't change very often. Like it, no, or, it, it changes at a snail pace, right? Yes. So, um, you they're know, still, I they're wanna... still walking around in horse and buggies in <laughs> yeah. the insurance industry. I mean, it amazed me everything we just went through and, and switching to telesales. You really get you really got a feel for how many agents out there are still doing things face to face. And yes. I'm not saying that that's not a great way to do business, but I think there's a hybrid model would probably be the best. But yeah. so I want to leave a legacy on the insurance industry. Um, but ideally, that that legacy I want to play out for three generations. Meaning, mm. I want I want to impact three generations, three in my family. So my son, my son's son, and my son's son's son, if, if it goes, you know, if that happens, yeah. I want my, my impact to be known that, that deep. Right. Wow. Um, and, and that's, that's a big goal. It's a lofty goal, but, um, that's what keeps me motivated that, that leaving a legacy on the insurance industry. And quite frankly, I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. And I don't think you should at, at, at nah. our age or, or where we're at. I don't, I don't think we should know exactly. But the, I mean, we can't think big enough right now. No. The thing yeah. is, like, people think, Cody, you think so big, but you got some huge goals. I'm thinking like I this. I can't wait to ride on that jet, man. Dude, it's Dude, happening. I can't wait. It's, what, it's what do you say? Happening. You're buying it July of next year? Is that right? Done. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in, bro. Come yeah. on now. I'll pay for some fuel, dude. I, I got you like, in? I got a couple hundred bucks for some I, for What some if it's a couple fuel? grand? You're I mean, still in. Hey, Come on, it's be handing yeah, in a year. Whatever, you know? dude. We'll just take the private jet to Dubai and, and Done. have a good time. It may cost a little more than a couple Maybe grand in fuel, but. <laughs> <laughs> start an insurance agency. 20 grand in fuel. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Dude. We'll split it. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank How do they you. follow you? Uh, so you can follow me on Instagram at B underscore Hannon. Uh, Facebook, just Bradley Hannon. And then whatever else we come up with while That's we're it. here. That's so it. hopefully the That's YouTube it. channel here soon and, and, and everything else. I love it. This dude is a beast. Definitely follow him. Stay plugged in. Come to percent and meet him. All right. I'm speaking into existence. Yeah. He will be there. He's already got a ticket. Oh yeah. He's ready. Come meet him. 
I'm going to keep finding amazing people like my buddy Brad to interview, to put on camera, and for you to learn from. If you've never subscribed, come on now. Take a second. Do that. See you on the next one. Hey, if you love this interview, and I know you did, I got another one that I know you're going to love too. It was how to write a billion dollars, a billy in a month. It's right there. Click on that video. I'll see you over there. Because what we're starting to find is that there are plenty of ways that you can open the door with Medicare supplements, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. You guys know this.